Ellie Damani Cox and her husband Michael are visiting from Harrisonburg, and she is the one who is responsible for me starting many years ago in music ministry. We were playing at a retreat together, and very long story short, that's how I ended up in music ministry at Blessed Sacrament Catholic Church for so many years. And so I am thrilled, like I have not seen her since COVID started, so this is, I'm just very, I'm excited for her and for me. Okay. So I just want to say welcome, Ellie.
Your brothers and sisters, let us humbly beseech the Lord our God to bless this water which he has created, which will be sprinkled on us as a memorial of our baptism. May he help us by his grace to remain faithful to the spirit we have received. Almighty, ever-living God, who will that through water, the fountain of life and the source of purification, even souls should be cleansed, and receive the gift of eternal life. Be pleased, we pray, to bless this water, which we seek, for, uh, which by which we seek protection on this your day, O Lord. Renew the living spring of your grace within us, and grant that by this water we may be defended from all his, from all ills of spirit and body, and so approach you with hearts made clean and worthily receive your salvation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. table of his kingdom. Amen.
Christ has been baptized in the river Jordan, and as the Holy Spirit ascended upon him, solemnly declared him your beloved son. Grant that your children by adoption be born of water and the Holy Spirit may always be well-pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. I know there are some people who follow the readings on their uh, uh, iPad or they follow the readings in their missile. Today there's an option. Uh, we are using the readings for cycle B uh, this year.
first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith. Who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one who testifies, and the Spirit is truth. So there are three that testify, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And the three are of one accord. If we accept human testimony, the testimony of God is surely greater. Now the testimony of God is this, that he has testified on behalf of his Son. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus. In the church uh, uh, architecture too, 
oftentimes you'll see uh, ceilings that are painted blue and uh, will have stars in them. That's not just because that's a pretty thing to do. It's because when we celebrate the Eucharist here, heaven and earth meet. We are celebrating the same Mass that is being celebrated in heaven. And so that, that uh, experience is there. Uh, at Saint at Incarnation, we have a baptismal font that's at the door of the church, and that has a significance. What it because what it means, what it teaches is how we enter the church is through the waters of baptism. How we enter the church is through Christ being formed as His uh, being given divine life. By the way, that's also something that's very specific to Christians. This concept of divine filiation. Now I know that that may be a big word, a big couple of words, divine filiation. In other words, that God doesn't just create us. God just doesn't just love us. But what, what we have been, has been revealed to us as Christians is God wants us to, wants to give us divine life. He became man so that we might become divine. And that happens through the waters of baptism. Now, Christians are not the only ones that did this. The temple at the time of Jesus also was supposed to represent the universe. And the Holy of Holies had a uh, cloth separating the Holy of Holies from the rest of the temple. And the cloth was blue. And Embroidered in this blue cloth were as best a representation, from what we know, a best of representation that we can get, or they could get at that time, of the stars of the heavens above the temple. Why am I talking about that in terms of the baptism of the Lord? Because this, remember the scene. When Jesus is baptized by John in the waters of, of the Jordan, he comes out of the water and it says the heavens are torn. Now, uh, that's actually a, a pretty good uh, word for it, but it actually, it, it's more than that. It was the heavens were rent. They were cut open. And this idea in, into a biblical mind Whenever you made a covenant with people, and in our first reading today, it says God is making a covenant with us. And it says, I will make a covenant. That's actually not what it says in the Hebrew. What it actually says is, I will cut you a covenant. Because anytime a covenant was made, there was a sacrifice. And the sacrifice, the animal itself would be cut in two, it would be rent in two, and half of it would be burnt as a burnt offering to the Lord, and the other half would be given back to the family to be eaten, so that we would be in communion with the sacrifice that you celebrate. Sound familiar? We, when Jesus comes out of the, the baptism uh, of, of John from the Jordan. The Holy Spirit descends upon him and the voice from heaven cries out, this is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Now did God the Father call out, this is the, my beloved Son whom I am well pleased because Jesus needed to be baptized? No, he was God. The baptism of John was a baptism of repentance. A baptism for the forgiveness of sin. A baptism preparing us for the coming of the Messiah. So then why did Jesus, why was he baptized by John? And by the way, in another gospel, John is embarrassed, you know. When he says, I, should, you sh I shouldn't baptize you, you should be baptizing me. And he says, let it, be for the, uh, at, let it be this way for now. Because Jesus, when he enters those waters, he's standing in our place. Jesus became man 
so that man might become divine. Jesus became human so that human beings might share divine filiation. And he stood as, not just uh, as he came into the world, he would tell us, you know, how we are to live according to God's law and how to move away from sin. But he just doesn't tell us to move away from sin. He stands with us in our brokenness. He stands with us in the muck of life. By the way, that's always a good uh, temp, you know, where am I standing when I am using church teaching? Am I using it as a club simply to tell people or, I mean, we have to be, we have to be honest and truthful and, and forthright with what the church teaches, but we also have to do it in such a way that we stand with those who are in the midst of dealing with sin in their lives. But Jesus, when he comes in, Mark's gospel also ends with another scene that should be connected to Jesus' baptism today. Because when Jesus dies on the cross, again, he identifies with us. He becomes, as St. Paul says, he became sin for us. So when he dies on the cross, what happens after he hands over his spirit? In the temple, that tapestry, that cloth that was great, that help was in the Holy of Holies, that separated the Holy of Holies, that only the high priest could enter as a sign of the people entering in communion with God. It is rent, it is cut, it is torn asunder from top to bottom. And the next line in Mark's Gospel is the words of the centurion. This was truly the Son of God. Jesus cut a covenant for us. He cut a covenant of love and mercy and forgiveness through the cross. So when we think of, of this baptism of the Lord, we have to remember that it's the end of Christmas, but it's also the beginning of ordinary time, the beginning of walking with Jesus, the beginning of, of identifying yourself with Jesus throughout this whole year as we hear the gospel. So how do, do we identify with Jesus right now in terms of what our world needs right now? Because remember also in the first reading it said, your ways are not my ways and your thoughts are not my thoughts. What are kind of the thoughts of the world that we generally deal with? Most times when uh, in the world we're dealing with people who said, if something bad happens to you, they said, I want justice, I want punishment, I want retribution. And it goes back and forth, back and forth. And that's the way human beings most often think. But that's not how Jesus came into the world. If this world needs, and this world does need, to stand, in, you know, someone to stand in the muck of our sin with us and proclaim the good news, to proclaim the gospel, but we also have to do it like Jesus, being conformed to him in how he came into the world. How did he come into the world? He came in to stand with us as a sign of his love and mercy. Now, forgiveness and mercy for some people may sound weak. You know, when you're facing the world's problems, it may sound like, uh, you know, that's insufficient. By the way, they also accused Jesus of that at the cross. That's actually why he ended up on the cross. But if we really want to identify with Jesus, if we want to be different in this world because of our baptism, because of this divine affiliation, we also need to be instruments of his love and mercy in this world. Our baptism gave us access to God the Father, but not just for our own sake, but so that we could identify ourselves with Jesus. We hope and pray 
that as we grow this year in the Eucharist, as we grow this year as a church, as we build our church, that we become a place where the heavens are rent and the world and our community, this faith community, can see Jesus Christ, in whom the Father said, this is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In this time when the goodness and kindness of God our Savior has appeared, let us, dear brothers and sisters, humbly pour forth to him our prayers, trusting not in our own good works, but in his mercy. For the church, that we may allow the Holy Spirit to empower and enlighten us so that our lives may manifest that we are beloved daughters and sons of God, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those initiated by baptism to be followers of Christ, May we discern and live out the vocation to which Christ is calling them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the grace to listen, that we may recognize the many ways God calls us, invites us to life, and provides opportunities for us to respond. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, especially for Nicholas McManus, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Our Lady of the Rosary Parish, that we may continue to grow as a faith-filled community and be a people of deep gratitude, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are preparing for baptism and for all who are newly baptized, that they may be transformed by the waters of new life and allow the Spirit of God to guide their growth in faith, wisdom, and holiness, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of Congress, that God will give them a clear understanding of the struggles and sufferings of people, encouraged to address the issues before them for the good of the nation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And that in light of the violence that happened in Washington, D.C., that Christians might be a source of healing and forgiveness in our country, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our and also for Mary Sufin, uh, who was a resident at uh, English Meadows, who we've been visiting, uh, who passed away this week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. And we pray, O Lord our God, that Mary, the Virgin Mary, who married to bear God and man in her chaste womb, may commend the prayers of your faithful in your sight. Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God our Almighty Father. Amen. Accept, O Lord, the offerings we have brought to the honor, the revealing of your beloved Son, so that the oblation of your faithful may be transformed into the sacrifice of him who willed in his compassion to wash away the sins of the world. He lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. And Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere we give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in the waters of the Jordan, you revealed with signs and wonders a new baptism, so that through the voice that came down from heaven, we might come to believe in your word dwelling among us, and by the spirits descending like in the likeness of a dove, we might know that Christ, your Savior, has anointed with the oil of gladness, and sent to bring good news to the poor. And so with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty without end, we acclaim. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
And recognizing the sacrificial victim, by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all and the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mary, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, especially Nicholas McManus, for whom we offer this Mass, and for all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. But only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
for those of our parishioners and our guests that may be online with us today, an act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. But since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you.
and ask uh, those who are in charge of taking the Eucharist to the homebound to please come forward. We send you forth with the Eucharist for our brothers and sisters who are unable to attend Mass with us. We invite you to please let them know that they're united with us in the Eucharist we celebrate with the communion they receive. In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Nourished with these sacred gifts, we humbly entreat your mercy, O Lord, that faithfully listening to your only begotten Son, we may be your children in name and in truth, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I know with Christmas and my father's death, I have not been consistent about being in the office, uh, but I will be in the office this week if anyone wants to come by for confession on, um, on Wednesdays. Uh, Father Chris will, however, not be in the office this week uh, because this is his vacation week. And then the following week is my vacation week. Uh, and so I, I'll be gone uh, not just that week, but also uh, we're, we've been following this pattern of every other week you have me. Uh, there'll be a guest priest here uh, that day. Will it be Father Tim or? Yes. What? Father Tim Bowling. Father Bowling or Father Tim? Oh, we know that already. Okay, good, good. Uh, and a uh, couple of other announcements. Again, uh, I really have enjoyed uh, the uh, mat, the family blessings and the house blessings that we've done online so far. If you all know folks in the parish who have been away, please encourage them to sign up uh, for those. Uh, we'll be doing those through the first week of March uh, as well. And then um, I thought I was having my crozet chat on Friday when I was having my incarnation chat. And so I was talking to you all on the, on the chat. Um, and, but I wanted to let you know that uh, we, we are in the running to get a free organ. Uh, the, uh, there is an Allen Brothers organ that one of the parishioners at the, uh, at the cathedral had. And I'm one of three people who have uh, this, uh, said, we'll take it. And uh, we'll, 
the uh, the uh, woman's husband, or the gentleman's husband, or gentleman's wife, will decide which church gets it. Okay, so uh, please uh, oh, please pray. <laughs> um, and then, um, and Marianne, any other announcements that I can think of? No, no. Okay, the Lord be with you. Before I say bow your head for God's blessing one final time, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Bow your head for God's blessing. May the God of infinite goodness, who by the incarnation of his Son has driven darkness from the world, and by the glorious birth has illumined this most holy time, drive far from you the darkness of vice and illumine your hearts with the light of virtue. Amen. Amen. May God who will that the great joy of his son's saving birth be announced to shepherds by the angel. Fill your minds with the gladness he gives and make you heralds of his gospel. Amen. Amen. And may God who by the incarnation brought together earthly and heavenly realm fill you with the gift of his peace and favor and make you sharers with the church in heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.